What exercises are helpful for kyphosis? The spine is naturally has healthy curves that are associated with maintaining overall spinal health and function. And the spine's healthy curves help make it stronger, make it more flexible, make it better handle to, to handle mechanical stresses and gravitational compressional forces. The spine is curved in each of the main sections of the spine. And the main sections are the cervical spine being the neck, the thoracic spine being the middle and upper back, and the lower back being the lumbar spine. When we look at a kyphosis, the kyphosis refers to the spinal curvature that's associated with bending towards the back of the body. And the lordosis refers to the spinal curvature that bends towards the front of the body. And when we look at from the side of the spine, we know from the side that each area of the spine should have its own specific curvature. The kyphosis is normally typically found in the thoracic spine bending towards the back. And the lordosis is typically found in the cervical and lumbar spine bending towards the front. Normal ranges for these curvatures is roughly between 20 and 40 degrees, even though 40 degrees to 45 degrees is considered the ideal range. So when we look at a thoracic kyphosis, it should roughly run between 20 and 45, but ideally it's between 40 and 45. A kyphosis can, can be where the normal range of a thoracic kyphosis is greater than what it's supposed to be, meaning it goes to 50, 60, or 70 degrees. Or it can mean that where you're supposed to have a lordosis, you have a kyphosis. And that's very often associated in the neck or the low back. So where you're supposed to have a normal lordosis in your neck, it's bending in the opposite way, leading to a kyphosis. So when we look at what exercises to help kyphosis, the first thing you have to understand is where the kyphosis is located. Are you trying to address an increased thoracic kyphosis? Are you trying to address a kyphosis that's in the cervical spine where you're supposed to have a lordosis? Or you're supposed to address the, the lumbar spine where you are supposed to have a lordosis and now you have a kyphosis. But the majority of cases we're looking at is dealing with a cervical kyphosis where you're supposed to have a lordosis or increased thoracic kyphosis and meaning that they have something, something called thoracic hyperkyphosis. Now kyphosis, kyphosis exercises typically try to move the spine in the opposite position and normally they're trying to increase the ability of the spine to extend because extending the lumbar spine will reverse the kyphosis, extending the cervical spine typically reverses the kyphosis and extending the thoracic spine will normally decrease the kyphosis. So performing exercises that strengthen the extensor muscles of the body and of the spine typically are associated with reducing the kyphosis that's associated with it. And the stronger the extensors muscles are, typically the better off they are at pulling the kyphosis out of the spine and moving it into a better position. Now, no exercise alone can correct a structural kyphosis. And unfortunately, as curves or kyphosis sit there longer and longer and longer, they move from postural to, and be, start becoming structural. And to reduce a structural kyphosis, you must use exercises, but they must be integrated into treatment plans that really address the spine on a structural level, such as uh, chiropractic care, possibly corrective therapy, and corrective rehabilitation, even corrective scoliosis or kyphosis exercises, and also even sometimes corrective bracing. But it must be integrated with other treatment options to help reduce the kyphosis that we're dealing with. Now, if we're looking at a cervical kyphosis, very often head retraction tends to be one of the most common things that are associated to try to help improve a postural kyphosis in the cervical spine. So they try to reduce, you do a head retraction exercises, which targets the muscles in the neck and helps stretch them and helps, um, and helps make the ones that are weak become stronger. And that helps reduce the kyphosis that could be occurring in a cervical spine. When we look at other areas like the mid back, normally laying face down and doing a thoracic extension can normally increase flexibility of the chest and reduce the thoracic kyphosis that's developing and help reduce the hyperkyphosis in the thoracic spine. These are things very often people call like Superman exercises, um, where they're extending their, their neck and their mid-back and their lumbar spine to help get their spine to extend better. And these exercises are very commonly used to help manage a postural kyphosis. But these exercises alone will not reduce a structural uh, kyphosis because normally the kyphosis must be managed in a different level. When we look at treatment plans for excessive kyphosis, either in the neck or the mid-back or the low back, the first thing you must look at is the causation, where it's located, and whether it's a postural or structural problem.
problem. Once you address that, you can start managing the kyphosis appropriately by using the whatever exercises, therapy, and rehabilitation to make the spine strong, more flexible, and help stabilize the kyphosis that's developing. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.